Hey everybody, welcome to story time. Welcome to story time. Oh, I couldn't wait for tonight to get here. Wow. Did you have a good day at school? <laughs> yeah. Whew. Wow. Cannot believe how fast time is going by. It seems like you just started back and you've already been in some of you two weeks and some of you are going on your third week. Wow, wow, wow. Ha. Ah, it's nice to be with you tonight. I have the greatest story to tell you about. I just love it. It's called, He Remembered to Say Thank You. Oh, how important it is to say thank you. Sometimes we get really, really busy and we'll forget to say thank you to people, but it's really important to say thank you. So tonight we're going to read this wonderful story. And as I told you, the title is He Remembered to Say Thank You. So we're going to get started because I know you have to go to bed earlier and there's things that you have to do. I hope you got all your homework done. I hope you worked really, really, really hard. Yes, sirree, I do. And I hope everything is going really, really great for you. Make sure if it isn't, you um, see what we can do to help you, okay? Because that's really, really important. So we're going to get started right now on our story. He remembered to say thank you. These are old, old books like I used to have read to me when I was really, really little. And I borrowed these books and um, I was really surprised because um, I know that some of the kids that read these books, they're grown up and they're your parents. <laughs> yes, they're your parents. And these were the storybooks that I used to read and I would read to them as well. And they grew up liking these stories too. So that's pretty neat, isn't it? So we're going to get started. You all ready? Yes. Okay. In a little town on the top of a hill, at the end of a very narrow street, a kind old priest with tears in his eyes wiped the dust from his tired feet. He sat with Hiram and stared at the ground. The words that he had to say were so hard to say. Hiram, I have very sad news. You must leave this town right away. Oh, no wonder he was crying. He was having to say goodbye to his friends. See, they're way up on a hill. And this priest is talking to his friend named Hiram. That's kind of a different name, isn't it? Hiram, you have a disease that's called leprosy. I wish it were not true. But you must go so your family and friends don't get this sickness from you. No one should ever come close to you. So if you should meet a stranger, you must now cry out very loudly. Unclean! Unclean! Stay away! Stay away! Unclean! To warn him about the danger. Leprosy was a very, very bad disease. And when people used to get it in the olden days, like in the Bible days, there was no cure. There was nothing that they could do. And so when they got leprosy, they would have to leave their families. They would have to leave their friends and they would all have to go find a place to live all by themselves or with people who had leprosy so that it wouldn't hurt their families. So as we read, you'll, you'll hear a little bit more about what leprosy does. So here they are talking. And Hiram is very, very sad. And the priest is sad because him... Him and Hiram were best of friends. Hiram left town. He felt so hurt and so alone. 
when everyone called him unclean, unclean. He wanted to say goodbye to his friends, but they were afraid to be seen with him or by him or to touch him. So they hid behind stairways and they peeked around doors and climbed up the tallest trees. They were all so frightened that they stayed far away from their friend with the dreaded disease. There goes Hiram, he's leaving town. Look at, see him sneaking out behind the door. There's a man up in the tree. Everybody's hiding, he's hiding behind his donkey. Look at over here, he's hiding behind the stairs. All these people used to be his friends and now that he has this disease, they're all scared because they don't want to get it either. His family, his friends, everybody, and and he has to leave. Look at, can you see his face? Can you see how sad he looks? I would be sad too, huh? I'd be sad if you had to leave me, and you would be sad if I had to leave you. So Hiram, he went to live in a cave nearby. It was a cave that he and his friends had found when he was just a little boy, and they had come to play there so many times together. The cave in those days with all the boys laughing, it had a cheerful sound. He leaned against a sycamore tree and looked at the clear blue sky and he wanted to dance and sing again, but like he did with his friends, but instead he just, he just sat there and he just started to cry. His friends, his friends wouldn't come to the cave anymore, and there he was all by himself, and he was just so, so sad. Tears trickled down his thin, pale cheeks as he prayed, God, oh God, please let me be free. I'll thank you, and I'll serve you every day of my life. Just please cure me of this leprosy. Look at him praying. Have you ever wanted God to give you something so greatly that you just said to him, if you'll just give this to me, I'll praise you, I'll worship you. He just, he just began to pray to God. For many years, Hiram lived all alone. No friends, no family, just Hiram alone in the cave, all by himself. But then very late one night, nine more lepers came with such wonderful news. It made Hiram dance with delight. They told him Jesus is coming this way tomorrow. We've come to see him, they said. He must have the power to heal leprosy. He brought people from back from the dead. So surely he can cure us of this disease. Look at, look at them all. They're all lined up. See how the leprosy has bothered their arms and their hands and some of them are on canes and that's what leprosy does. This man, he's on crutches. Look at their feet all bound up. One time when I was in India, we went to visit this place and the lepers started coming and they all stayed together because they had to like walk together to help each other walk. And some of them pulled people in wagons because they had leprosy. And leprosy is an awful disease. It, it just will like take all of your arms away. And so these men, they were, they wanted to be healed just like Hiram did. And so they all came and they were so excited that Jesus was going to come by. And remember it said that Hiram began to dance. Look at him. Look at him. He's just Oh, he's just as happy 
as he can be. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Hiram kept dancing and shouting for joy. His happiness just spilled everywhere. Jesus was coming. They were telling him the very next day, God had answered Hiram's prayer. <laughs> he was coming by his way. Oh, Hiram went to bed that night, but he tossed and he turned in his bed all night. He was much too excited to rest. Have you ever been like that? Like you're going to get ready to go on vacation or it's Christmas Eve and you know Christmas is the next morning or your family or friends are coming or you got a birthday and and you're just so excited it's just so hard to sleep well that's just how Hiram was and then he started to think oh, what what would he say when Jesus came would would Jesus hear his his request to be healed what Oh my goodness, he, he just couldn't think of, of everything. Look at him, he's just laying in his bed and he's got his fire going to give him light. But he can't sleep because he's so excited. So long before the sun came up, when the air was so very still, he got up quickly and he left the cave and he climbed all the way up to the top of the hill. And he waited and he watched the road for hours. His body started to ache. Oh, it hurt so bad. And he closed his eyes and nodded his head. And he just couldn't stay awake. And he fell asleep right there on the tree. Here he is going up the hill. And there he is. He's so tired because he hasn't slept all night waiting for Jesus to come. The sun was low in the orange sky when Hiram awoke with a start. He jumped to his feet and he looked around. Fear filled his pounding heart. Oh no, oh no, he said, I missed him. Hiram cried to himself, something always goes wrong. How could I miss my chance to see Jesus and to be healed of this disease? Why? Why did I have to go to sleep? And why did I have to sleep so long? Oh, he's just so sad. Oh, my goodness. Jesus is not there. Then all of a sudden, far away, he heard the sound of a noisy, laughing crowd. He saw the dust from their tramping feet rise in this swirling cloud. He rubbed his eyes. Oh, my goodness. And he shook his head to be sure that he wasn't dreaming. A happy cheer got stuck right in his throat and then escaped in a squeaky scream. Ah! Ah! He began to scream. <laughs> Look at, he sees it. He sees it off in the distance. Can you see the crowd? Yes. Oh, could it be? Could it be? A hush fell over the startled crowd. Fear danced in their terrified eyes. They began to shout, keep away from us, keep away from us. But Jesus said, stop it, stop, be silent. He silenced all of their cries because the lepers were all running down the hill. We're tired of being alone. Jesus, master, have mercy on us, they begin to cry. Please heal us so we can go home to our friends and our family. But remember, they were unclean, and that's why the people got so scared. Look at, look at all these lepers running down the hill calling for Jesus. And the crowd is just, no, get away, get away, get away from us. But 
Jesus said, don't, stop, stop. Don't worry about this. He turned to the man who were still far away and called out across the field, go into the village and find the priest to show him that you have been healed. Oh, the countryside rang with happy shouts as the 10 men rushed to go visit the priest to say, we have been healed. They couldn't wait to be welcomed home by their friends and their family with a party and a great big feast. There's all the lepers lined up and Jesus is telling them, go, go show yourself to the priest. I've healed you on this day. You can go home to your families. And in those days they had to go to the priest and they had to show the priest that they were healed before they could go back into the village, back into the town, back where their families were. Oh, he got to see his mummy and his daddy and his children. And, and he got to see the priest. And, oh, he was just so excited. But suddenly, Hiram stopped. And he remembered his prayer. He remembered his promise that he made. The promise that he made in his prayers to God. Do you remember what that was? Do you remember what he prayed to his God? Oh, you guys are so smart. Yes, that if he healed him, he would praise him and worship him all the day long. So he turned around and he ran back and he said, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus for showing me how much God cares, for answering my prayer, for healing my body. Look at, there goes the nine men. See them all running? There they go. Oh, but there's Hiram. He's going the opposite direction. He's keeping his promise to God. Jesus was silent, then asked the crowd, where are the other men? Where are they? Why has only one man returned when God's great gift was given to all ten? Of all those men, only this one remembered to thank God for what he had received, his healing of leprosy, so he could go home to his friends. Jesus said to Hiram, go home to your friends. You are well because you believed. And the Bible tells us that because Hiram came back to say thank you, Jesus completely healed him. That means that his arms that were scarred and his legs that were scarred and all the things that the leprosy did to him, Jesus completely healed his body just because he had remembered to come back and say thank you. Isn't that something? Oh, you know, so many times we can just like forget to say thank you, but thank you is one of the most important things that we should do is be thankful. And so Jesus told us about that story in the Bible about the 10 lepers, only one came back. Nine never did, but Hiram did. So sometimes people around us, they don't ever say thank you, but you say thank you. When someone does something kind for you, you always remember to say thank you. Remember to say thank you to your mom because she was kind to make you dinner. Remember to say thank you to your mom and dad because they work really, really, really hard. Take good care of all your toys because it costs them a lot of money to buy them for you. Help keep your house nice and clean because they work hard to give you that house. Be thankful for your bed. Be thankful you have a shower. Be thankful when you get to play. 
be thankful, yep, even that you get to go to school. Yeah, and be thankful that you can even go to sleep at night and have warm covers and a nice pillow. How important that is. So there's so many things that we can be thankful for. So what I would like you to do in your spare time tomorrow is take time to say thank you. And one place that you can start is how do you think your teacher would feel when you got to school or you're online with your teacher and you said, teacher, I just want to thank you for teaching me today. Oh, I know she's going to be like Hiram. And I know she's going to be like Jesus. She's going to be so happy. Yes, that you said thank you because she works very, or he works very, very hard to help you to be the smartest person you can be. So let's find lots of people to say thank you for, okay? And I know you'll be smiling. And you'll have lots of joy, just like Hiram did. So it's time for you to get ready for bed. And it's time for me to get ready to bed. Because I've had a long, long day. And before I do, I got to tell you how much I love you. Yes, sirree. You ready? Are you ready to take a ride all the way up to the moon? And around Jupiter and Mars. Yes! Whoosh! Around the Milky Way. And come right back here to my heart. Oh, I love you so much. Love you bunches and bunches and bunches more. You have a wonderful sleep. Remember to give oh, oh, Jesus a hug tonight. Oh, he's going to give you beautiful sleep. He's going to help you with your schoolwork. He's going to help you to be just the kindest, sweetest person ever to the people that are around you. Yes, sir. Keep working hard, okay? Don't be like Andrew and Daniel last week who took off and didn't listen to dad. You get that work done, okay, so that you can go out and play and have some fun when school is done, okay? I love you so very, very much, and I can't wait to see you next Tuesday night for story time. So God bless you. Love you bunches. Have a great, great week.